What's up, guys? Welcome back to another Yubcast podcast summer edition. Yo. Today hey, we got sir. Izzy. Yo, what's up, Marcos? Me. And Jeremy. Me. Me. <laughs> so, actually, today we're going to be talking about a super, a, such a super interesting topic, uh, courts, which is kind of like a you're like probably thinking like, oh, how does this like even like, like you know have like any like reference to me or like relate to me. And you'd be surprised if you're a Christian person, you'd be surprised how closely related your probably your local church is to like a cult. And then you're going to be shocked by the end of this podcast. I'm telling you right now. It's kind of like borderline. You don't even know if it's actually uh, a, a church or, you know, uh, a cult. Because like you said, it's super borderline with, you know, um, well, we can talk about it later. But, you know, it talks about how uh, sometimes we... We just follow what other people are saying without actually researching the Bible. If it's true, if not, you know, you should think about that. And another thing is, like, you don't know how close to your house might be a cult. Like, maybe it could be a church yeah. on the corner of your house, and you don't know what kind of stuff they're doing, like, what kind of crazy stuff they're doing. Yeah. So we'll be touching bases on some of the And then the next cults. thing you know, they're inviting your kid to summer school. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or camp. Oh, yeah. camp, yeah. yeah. So that, that's why we want to cover, like, what is there to be aware of cults? So, yeah, I don't know. If someone wants to bro. I, I want to start with a, a little story, bro. I want to. I want to. Int- I want to introduce to you guys this guy named Joseph Smith. I'm. Oh, I'm yeah. sure a lot of you guys know who this no man way. is, bro. I'm sure you guys know. It's this. Okay. So it was this. There was this young guy, right? He's probably like in his teen years. Grew up as a farm boy. Was poor. His family struggled a lot. It was in the east side of the United States. Had to travel to survive. Finally settled down. And uh, this kid's like 17. And he has multiple, like, uh, has been accused multiple times of, like, crimes. And yeah. one of the crimes was fraud. So, Whoa. so he actually had, like, this business that he had in his hometown. And he would, like, basically tell people, oh, like, I can find treasure because I'm, like, a, some sort of psychic through this rock. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be able to find it. And so this guy's like, oh, like, there's, like, an old silver mine, and I'm trying to see where the treasure's at. And so this guy's like, all right. And then he does, like, this little magic or psychic stuff. And then uh, nothing comes to fruition. Like, there, it's not really clear what happened, but it ends up that the nephew of the, of the guy that hired him ends up suing him. For fraud and he probably thinks that his uncle is a little you know a little crazy because yeah. he's hiring this guy to do this and so they actually put the the uncle on the stand and the uncle's like uh he's basically like oh i i totally believe in this guy so they just dropped this case because the the uncle is like pretty much delusional and believes everything mm-hmm. in him so this kid you're this kid got nothing going in his life he got nothing bro he's poor but he got one thing for him he's charming and he's smart. And so he's like, well, what can I do to, like, rise up in this life? Another yeah. Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> bro, why, why are you describing a villain backstory? Like, it's mine, bro. <laughs> like, Jeremy, let's get you on a farm. Like, <laughs> uh, Please, no. <laughs> so, so this guy ends up, he goes into the woods. And, well, based on the religion, they say that he basically has, like, a vision. And some God and Jesus come down and he's like, this is my son and something yada, yada, yada. And he's like, Oh, like the religions that, you know, the Christianity, as you know, it's basically like, it's, it's fake. Like it's not, it's not the right religion. He's like, I'm going to show you what's the right religion. And so he leads him to like some golden tablets in the middle of nowhere, supposedly. And in there, there's like a history of like this lost civilization that actually came from um, Judea, Jerusalem, you know, Israel at the time, before King Hezekiah was overthrown by the Babylonians. And this people had supposedly moved into um, into the Americas, the New World, and had settled down. And basically, it, it it's like a the whole Book of Mormons is, is this. This is what we're talking about, Mormons. The whole book is talking about these people, how how they're ev- there was a good e- people, there was evil yeah. people. And then basically... Um, uh, it talks about how supposedly after Jesus died and resurrected that um, he supposedly went up and showed himself to them and was like and taught them the way. And for the next 200 years, they lived peacefully until there was like a rebellion. People just started fighting each other and everything got lost in That's history. True. Yeah. And so and like it was just so crazy to see like what why would a 17 year old kid 
want to make such a elaborate and like such an elaborate religion out of nowhere and why would he spend his time writing like a 200 page book for no reason <laughs> cha-ching yeah <laughs> money <pretty much. laughs> so if we go a little in t- into depth about his life we, we realize this man this man was into women and he had actually relations with uh, I believe it was 12 women like known sexually and he had over 50 marriages Damn. that Ooh. people don't know if they were sexual or not so you realize like this guy like he had nothing going for him but making a religion like basically made his life become like so good all of a sudden but i actually did research that too uh, about joseph smith and actually at the time it wasn't appealing like a such a large crowd like how he started it off so the actually uh, mormonism actually shifted their story or their point of view to say that um that after christianity had started uh that you know after the line of jesus and his disciples came so long it, they got corrupted to the point where we needed a new messiah so yeah. they actually portray as uh, joseph smith like like uh, a new messiah right they said that he had an encounter with an angel and that he was appointed with like two uh, or 12 new disciples to kind of recreate the same embodiment of christ and continue so basically he's trying to take christianity throw it out the door but he realized that it's actually more appealing if he takes this portion of the story and it actually i mean it did work because i mean mormonism is probably one of the larger scale religions yeah uh or cults to and, the, to this day. And, and it's worldwide yeah so i did research a little bit on that guy and the only thing that threw me off and one reason why good thing you know i could never get drawn into mormonism is they don't drink coffee <laughs> and for me it's like that's a no go but at least you can have multiple wives I don't care no coffee no coffee no go bro I already said it I'm cool with one <laughs> I don't know for about real. the what <laughs> <laughs> no bro but yeah I mean uh, did you did you want to touch more bases on, on yeah, that story so actually um, I was watching like um, documentaries of people that had been in the religion and left and this guy was explaining his story and what I realized is that not only just for Mormonism, but for any religion, in fact, people grow up and surrounded by this religion, and this is all they know. And even in Christianity myself, I've been raised, and everyone pretty much here had been raised with Christianity on its own. And it's until we question that, you know, religion, until we actually have that moment where we question, because a lot of people are like, oh, like, why would you question it? Why would you question God? Why would yeah. you question religion? But it's such an important, like, moment, because then that's how you realize is this true or is it not or is this fake you know yeah. and for a lot of mormons it, it they have come to a realization like this ain't it it ain't cutting it you know but one thing i i gotta like admit they are really good evangelists you know they actually go and you know go door and door and and, and preach their gospel i mean their their idea uh was something that us christians we really lack of you know their discipline is you know my respect they have a structure for sure behind it yeah um, but even then, I don't think it's like unflawed because um, just as a reference, I used to work at a dealership and I met this really cool guy, um, nicest dude ever um, named Cameron. I don't know if Cameron's ever going to watch this video, right? <laughs> and I actually reached out to him uh, recently on uh, on a topic, on a, pol- a political topic, because I thought his views were like Mormon, right? And what he responded on social media was like outside of Mormon views. And I was like, hey, bro, aren't you Mormon? Like, isn't that go against like like your religious views and he said actually bro uh i question mormonism and after like further review like i feel like it's not a real religion and he was like a devout mormon like from an early age uh went on his mission trip did all that and uh, he's actually my age he's uh he's 23 mm-hmm. and um he realized that like uh this isn't it and he questioned it to the point where like he realized it's not the true religion and all i had to say to him was like bro i, I hopefully like I hope, uh, you know, you find your calling that God has for you in your life. I didn't want to, like, shove uh, Jesus down his throat because uh, he's always watching, like, my stories and stuff like that. So he knows, like, what I'm about. Um, but, yeah, even that shows you to an extent that, yeah, I mean, people, once they question it, and if it doesn't, like, truly, like, I'd say make sense to them, they, they're going to leave it at, at that point. But, yeah. But, I mean, I, I just think it's a must, bro. Like, People like tell us all the time, like I know like older folk are probably scared that their kids, you know, question the religion, you know, because everyone goes through a phase where they're like, oh, is this for me or not? Yeah. And I think we shouldn't shy away. Like if we truly believe this is a true religion, you know, if you have that in your heart and don't be afraid to question it, you know, because 
if God is real, he's going to answer your, 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 your questions. You know, he's going to be like, I'm going to show you that I'm real. And it's happened before where I've questioned God and I'll be, and then all of a sudden he's like, well, bam, let me show you something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. True. The only thing is that, um, the sad part of all all this is that when you are part of a cult and you go, you get out, it's just, you don't want to hear anything about religion. uh, Exactly. Mm -hmm. Just, you just think like, oh, religion is just bad and, and you start hating on, on other people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's not, it's good to, you know, question religion. Um, so I was listening to this tech talk where this lady um, uh, pretty much talks about her experience with cult. Uh, her dad was uh, um, a pastor. He they were he actually founded the assembly. That's what you know the cult is called. Uh, random in fact, uh, he always um, denies that you know their church is a cult. But pretty much what she was saying was that um, she grew up in a pretty small I believe he was six years old she would go with her dad you know preach and you know do the evangelist call all that type of stuff and um and there is one time that they went and this lady just randomly you know went up to her and, and was like right now you know you're just little but you know um one day you're gonna grow up and you'll be able to decide if you want to stay in this or get out um she, I mean everything was good but she says that Little by little, she felt like her, their church was kind of like, you know, a little weird because they were not able to, you know, long skirts, you know, makeup. Like, they were harsh. And and uh, now that I remember, she said that one time, one of her, I believe, I don't know if it was uncle or cousin that uh, was molesting someone and told the church, well, basically her dad, and they covered up. They didn't do anything about it. Wow. What? So so she was like, you know, this is weird. You know, this is not supposed to happen, you know. So she started questioning everything. And little by little, when, once she hit college, she experienced full freedom. And she's like, you know, I, I like this, you know. And, and sadly, that what that's what made her leave the church and start questioning. And, and pretty much what she ends, she ends her testimony um, is saying that she saw a little girl, you know, um, with her dad preaching, and she came up with her and pretty much say the same thing. You know, right now you're, you're small, but uh, one day you're going to grow up and you're able to decide if you want to continue doing this or leave. And while I was, you know, listening, because I was listening with uh, my girlfriend, and we were like, you know, it's sad that now she doesn't trust people that are actually interested in her own well-being, you know? Yeah. Because <laughs> something that happened to her ruined... Um, Religion ruined, you know, relationship with God ruined pretty much everything, and and it's not just her cult, but pretty much every cult. Once you get out, like Mormon or any other, yeah, you just have trust issues because you don't believe. You know, is that guy really? You know, especially when you cover up something that's really, you know, impactful. You know, molesting, you know, a rape and all that is just kind of like what the heck? Yeah, it's kind of mm-hmm. like crazy. Yeah, and I mean, um, sorry, I blinked out for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Uh, we're but just... like when you um, when you grow up in a cult and all, it's all you know, right? And you don't you don't add, you don't actually get to experience like God. You just get to experience you know religion, you know exactly. man's rules. Um, yeah, I could definitely see how that leads to trauma, and um, it's kind of part of why we're we want to talk about this, you know. Um, when you, when you don't know that you know, God actually wants to do you good, and you all you experience is uh, men telling you to follow this certain, uh, this certain code, this certain like rules, um, and then you see those same men fail. Like, of course you want to run away from the church. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's it's like, and uh, it's why we want to talk about cults because we want to know like what are they? You know what makes a cult a cult? You know, and how do we stay away from them? You know, so I don't know if anyone wants to touch base on. Um, I don't feel like kick off Marshall uh, Applewhite again. Yeah, this dude is crazy. Um, (laughs) And we kind of relate. This happened in 1997. Um, uh, Before we start, it's just, uh, so I was doing a little research. And before the 19th century, all the cults that started was in England, um, Ireland, 
and France, mostly like it was from the other side. But once you know America came as a, as a country, it's all been American from ni- the nineteenth century to this point. Almost every cult or every uh, proclaimed you know Christ or all things like that, it's been American. Can so I, can I comment a little about that? Yeah, yeah. I just want to say like. Um, you mentioned England and France, and, and I think those were both places that had like a, a revolution in terms of like their society. There was like yeah. a huge shift in society. There, there was the French Revolution. Uh, actually, there was like a civil war um, that they like basically took out their monarchs. And, and I also think the English also had something similar happening on, and there there was like a whole shift in like society. So I, I want to say that there was something contributing to that. And like you said, everything has been to America. And we have seen over the last, like, probably, like, 100 years that America has been such a, like, like movement in society from the traditional norm, you know? Yeah. So this uh, this guy, is, his name is Marshall Applewhite. Uh, so pretty much, pretty much he is uh, known for his religion was called Heaven's Gate. So pretty much what he's talking about is that there's aliens and... He was kind of like going crazy. He, you know, talked to other church members and pretty much they kicked him out. They were like, this is not what we believe. This is not us, you know. Um, so I can't remember how, but he ended up in the hospital. And the, a nurse, he met a nurse that pretty much uh, encouraged this guy to follow and pursue what he was thinking and believing. So pretty much he was, you know, thinking that alien, aliens existed and they would come back to you know save humanity so pretty much it was instead of jesus it was aliens coming you know Mm -hmm. for humanity so he got a good following um but throughout the day i mean throughout the you know in 1972 he just uh he went to you know into a more i you know thinking and all that which pretty much led up to a, a massacre in 1997 so 39 people decided to stay and you know follow his teachings and he was like you know what uh i did believe at that that year there was a comet passing by and he was like that comet is actually a starship like there's a ship coming to come and pick us up um so he was like it's time for us to get our new bodies and by doing that we have to die so he rented a ranch um i believe it um uh where was it but pretty much he rented a large uh, house and there was kids, you know, woman, man, and pretty much they committed suicide. Um, he was one of the last ones to commit suicide. And he was, he believed that, you know, once that comment pa- I mean, passed, they were all gonna go to heaven, pretty much. They were gonna be the first ones to uh, be going into the promised land. So basically, he to Christianity um, and just kind of switch and change certain details and pretty much it was this new religion and 39 people uh, actually believed him um, and that's why it's been known because he became popular in back in the 90s because of mm-hmm. this mass suicide is like things like that has never happened here in the U.S. because, you know, the U.S. has been kind of like religious country, believing in Christianity and all that. So once this happened, um, all the news were talking about it, uh, you know, 30 people, you know, believing. And, you know, to be honest, you know, that that takes faith because, you know, he they believe that he was the chosen to lead them to the new, um, the new world and pretty much the new world. And, uh, you know, mm-hmm. this guy, I, I feel like when... If you're able to know how to speak with people, you can capture them, you know. Mm-hmm. We have, you know, Hitler. He was, you know, he was good with, you know, words and, and speaking. And, and like, um, the previous episode, they were talking about how, pe- how people, like, people know how to capture um, and, want, and they say something that we want to hear. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. And once you start touching bases on what, you know, you craving, that's where, you know, I would say that, and I would just, you know, gave them, they're like, they start following him, me, and, you know, the mind is so thin that once it breaks, you don't know what's real and what's not. Mm-hmm. And that's what these people are able to do, you know, they break your mind to the point where you're like, you know, maybe the, you know, whatever he's saying is not that crazy. Yeah. You know, yeah. maybe what he's saying is actually true. For and sure. once you go into that mentality, 
it's just like um like the perfect example is uh inception you know when that girl didn't know if he was uh, well, well, it was reality. What reality not, was, yeah. And, you know, once you hit that point, bro, like, it's just, like, down. I feel like for our audience, I feel like it's easy to judge from the silence and be like, whoa, like, these people are, like, crazy. Like, exactly. why would they even ever follow this guy in the first place? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I want you to think about it like this. When you go to your local church, you have a sense of community, bro. You have a sense of family. It feels really tight-knit. You know, you, you feel happy among those people, you know, because you do life with them. And yeah. so... Once you have that, like, niche, you know, that place that you could do life with, you're probably willing to die for a lot of those, like, beliefs and people. So, you know, I wouldn't go so far and be like, oh, these people are crazy for following this guy. Like, no, like, they probably were just like, hey, I click with this group. And then they just died. Mm -hmm. They wanted to be accepted. And maybe this guy was just, you know, pretty much setting up a home or or, or whatever they're craving. And pretty much he gave it that, you know. Uh, us as humans, we always crave, you know, acceptance. We crave love, and you know, we are not meant to be alone. So if this guy was, you know, giving you a family, um, it's kind of like gangs. You know, if once you feel like you're part of a something, you belong part of, you know, your life has meaning. Mm-hmm. You're gonna fall for that, and you're gonna be willing to die for that. You know? Especially part of something greater. You know. Exactly. Yeah. You're like, oh, now we're gonna be kings with aliens. Hey, <laughs> yeah. bro. But you That's know. True. Um, it kind of reminded me, you know, he's like basically giving prophecies. Oh, there's like going to be a comet that comes by. And this kind of reminded me of, of Jehovah's Witness. So if you guys didn't know, they actually made multiple pro- prophecies saying that, oh, the relig- in 1914, the world was going to end. 1914 yeah. came. It didn't end. Then after that, they were like, oh, well, before the generation 1914 dies, it's going to end. 1914 generation died. They're like, oh, well, the second generation and they kind of, like, update their prophecies that way that they, their religious state viable. And in this case, like, this guy was probably like, well, I'm not trying to update. He's like, you know what? I was like, we got to die. So he updated his whole, like, belief system. Just crazy. <laughs> Another thing I, I kind of found a trending, and they're not limited to this, but a lot of the cults are, like, uh, really, like, secluded, like, towns. Yeah. Um, like, from the couple of ones that I researched, um... I noticed that they're, like, in small towns, like, countryside, and, like, these people are, like, limited to, like, it pretty much even internet, like, so, like, whatever, like, they're told to in their town, like, if they're all in agreement, like, oh, yeah, or, like, all right, let's run with it, so that's why, like, they capture a lot of, like, local, like, small towns, and, and they get them to join um, their coal. I don't know if you finished up with that. Yeah, the, you can go, yeah. But I wanted to share, well, I looked up two. This, the first one I'm going to share is actually... On Netflix, they actually made a series about this one, and it's from the Waco uh, cult. So uh, the show Waco on Netflix, I think it launched in 2018. Um, it's about a cult that started by this man uh, named Benjamin Roden, and the cult is not uh, named Waco, but it's actually because it's based in Waco, Texas, oh, okay. the town. Uh, but they were actually uh, Seventh Day Adventists, mm. and they call themselves uh, David uh, Davidians. Um, and this guy, so this says, uh, I got a little info on his background. So he was born in 1902, and he was born in Oklahoma, and he was also a farm boy. So kind of to like that, kind of like background, even for like how Mormon started. This guy started like, you know, not really like rich background. He started on a farm, and then uh, he went to college to be a teacher. Uh, so he kind of learned in college how to influence people. And then later on, he moved to Texas, right? And he starts this uh, Seventh-day Adventist, uh, uh, like, belief system, right? And so just to give you guys a background, Seventh-day Adventists are almost similar to, like, Judeo-Christians. Mm-hmm. So they take, like, uh, you know, some belief from Jewish and some belief from, like, Christianity, and they kind of, like, mix it in a pot. Um, they actually don't worship on Sunday like most of no, us do. So Saturday. They, they, yeah. they reserve Saturdays for their worship. Um, and they do stuff like that. Um, I know they limited themselves to like eating pork, stuff like that. Uh, so they follow some Jewish laws, but not all of them. They can um, pick and choose. Yeah, they pick and choose which ones are like, you know, trending for themselves, right? And they run with it. Um, but um, this guy was like secluded. So he wasn't like super famous. But in Waco, Texas, like he was like their main guy, right? Mm-hmm. With this cult. And it went on for years. Um, and they actually didn't get investigated till. Uh, so he launched this in, let's see, I, I wrote it down here, um, 1978, I think. 
No, no. Actually, like around 1950s, he's already like mm-hmm. taken off uh, with this uh, David and Seventh Day Adventist, and he finally dies in 1978, and it, uh, it uh, goes to his uh, like partner, uh, last name Korish, and this guy starts doing like all these weird things uh, that start like getting attention from nobody greater than the ATF, right? <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, whoa, like who's the ATF? So they're uh, in charge of alcohol. Uh, what does this stand for again? Hide your guns, bro. Alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, so they're like in charge of all that. Now the reason, so they're doing all these things underground, but the reason they caught attention was because they opened a gun store. Mm. And they opened this gun store and the ATF's on them because they feel that they're actually storing weapons illegally. So um, mm. if for anybody that's into guns and stuff like that, an FFL can open uh, like a store, right, to sell guns, but they can't store things in like mass capacity, right? Mm-hmm. Or then they're going to get an eyeball for you. So all these things start surfacing that over the years, it turns out that they're like actually trafficking children, abusing wow. women. And like nothing, nobody was actually researching into this stuff until it happens that the ATF just came across them and they're like put them in a spectrum. And I feel like even then, the ATF didn't really care for their child trafficking. They were still just after, like, the guns and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, like, they're like, okay, so we're going to start investigating. So they finally got a warrant uh, to to actually look up, uh, like, what this guy is doing. So in 1993, they get a warrant to go into this place. And uh, they pretty much raided it. Uh, It was a February 28th. The ATF gets a a warrant. And they go and they raid uh, this, this facility. So... Uh, if you were to, like, put up a, a picture, it's actually, like, this big warehouse kind of, like, set up. Okay. And within this warehouse is also, like, their, like, their place where, like, they worship God, whatever, right? Um, and um, they actually get in this shootout because not only do they have guns on site, but they're, they're believers that are with this guy are, like he said, they're willing to lay down their lives. I'm actually off the mic, sorry. Uh, these people are willing to, uh, willing to lay down their lives. Um, and they get on this all-out fight, and four agents of the ATF died uh, in this battle, right? And then uh, a couple people died. Uh, but they went into this state of, um, what is it? Um, what's the word I was looking for? Uh, well, they have hostages, right? Okay. So the guy, Koresh, has hostages in his place, and he tells the, he tells the police, because after this, this fight... Uh, it says 900 officers surrounded this whole place. Yeah. I was like, bro, ain't nobody going nowhere. <laughs> 900 <laughs> officers. And uh, this guy tells them his request was, he's like, I'll let people go if you put a live broadcast of me preaching. And I was what? like, bro, you're like crazy. Like, oh, that's all you care for is like you're preaching. Like you could have got anything. Right. And he's like, hey, just put me on a live broadcast. And even then. They were like, nah, don't put this guy up, right? This guy's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, like, 14 days passed by, and the uh, attorney general of the state, or the state attorney general, right, uh, told uh, the FBI, all right, you guys could go ahead and raid, like, at, at whatever cost. Uh, you, can, you can go raid this place. And they did. So they get these armored trucks, and they go and they hit into the building, right, to make, like, holes on the walls. And they dropped 400 canisters of, of tear gas into the place. <laughs> I was like, bro, oh, you don't even, at this point, you don't even care about your hostages. Like, you're just trying to, like, pretty yeah. much, like, kill everybody in there. Mm-hmm. And, um, and as all this thing is happening, like, there, there's a where, like, at the time, they didn't really know much about this guy. But it turns out that within the hostages were a lot of children. So this guy, uh, as he was, like, progressing, he would take spiritual wives and it turns out these spiritual wives were as young as 11 years old. Jeez. I was like, what? I was like, that's bro. That's a case. That's a mega that's case. That's a mega case, bro. So this guy is over here taking wives for himself, and they're amongst the people that are actually captured within this building. So they go, they drop all these canisters, and uh, this big fire breaks out, right? Um, and they can't stop this fire. So everybody within the building died. Oh. And they actually retrieved Whoa, what the heck? Every, everybody in the building died, including Koresh, right? Uh, and they retrieved all these bodies, and 25 of them were children. Oh. You know, mostly were predominantly, of course, girls. And I was, like, thinking, like, I don't know how... They don't know how many of these girls were actually, like, his, like, spiritual wives, right? Um, and including them, they found his body, Then they believed that he committed suicide. But it was, like, one of the mostly, like, like poor, like, carried out missions by, like, any, like, bureau, right? The FBI. Oh, yeah. 
So they, they had a lot of hate. That's why this show is like really famous, like Waco. And I know a little bit is like, you know, they always add a little drama in the show because I, I looked it up and it's not like 100% accurate to like the story. But I was like, bro, these people that were actually fighting with them, the men that were in this building, were willing to lay down their lives, like at whatever cost, because a lot of them were like self inflicted, you know, suicide after the fire like broke out. And they actually like investigated the FBI because they thought that the tear gas they threw was flammable and started the fire. But mm. it turns out it was actually caused by the guys inside. Mm. They were just like burn everything down. But I was like, this is like one of the craziest stories, uh, you know, like one of the quotes that carried out in the U.S. And I was like, you know, it, and I would say it would be inspired by like, you know, other you know countries that came and carried on. Uh, but so far, this is one of the biggest. But after doing further research, I found another one that I'll save for the end. Mm -hmm. um, that was actually bigger than them and bigger like worldwide. But um, I don't know. What do you guys think about this? Just as a whole, like put it in perspective, like, bro, you got 900 officers. <laughs> I was like, this, this like all showed like this big showdown. And like, it's all just because of one man and one cult. Uh, I mean, sadly, it has to do with, with like JC was saying, you know, um, if you don't gotta have anything going, you always want girls in. If, if we we're real we every case or every cult that we've seen the people that suffer the most are women and children you know That's they true. always take them as wives um and the sad thing is not like where are the parents that's true so another thing like i was kind of curious and there's not really a lot of information on this but like for like women and like you know like let's say a guy has a daughter right and they go and join this cult like, are they just gonna like freely give their kids away? Like, yeah, I mean, it's this crazy. is like, this is your kid, right? Like, you laid down your life for your kid, but now you switch up and now you're willing to lay down your life for this guy, like this leader, right? To the extent, like, you know, you can have my kids. I was like, I can't wrap my head around that. I like, mean, bro, we look at it like super crazy, but wasn't Abraham willing to give up his only son Isaac? That that's God. true. Actually, you're right. Yeah. And in a way, that was like a test, right? And like the moral of the story was like, you know, he was willing to give everything for God, even mm -hmm. though God wasn't going to require him to sacrifice his kid, right? But these kids are like willing to like sacrifice their kid, uh, you know, at whatever extent. Mm -hmm. um, you can just leave that one out, bro. It's yeah. good. Um, but but it know? is crazy how, I mean, I guess people would think like, yeah, we were saying, you know, if Abraham was willing to sacrifice uh, his own only son, you know, um, I guess it's my turn to sacrifice, you know, um, you know my daughter or, 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 or my kid. But, I mean, the moment you see that sexual relations, you know, it's in, like, in the whole situation. Like, you know, you need to think about it. Yeah. Especially getting married at 11. Like, a, a girl is still a, yeah, she's you know, a kid. innocent, you know, at that point. You and, know, you're barely getting into your teen stages, like, you know, and now you're, like, stuck in this place because you don't have a choice, right, at that age you're pretty much thrown into this life. Uh, another thing that kind of like, you know, and I'm not like surprised, right, that, you know, as a country, like, they weren't really caring for the allegations that this guy had going on for him, according to like, you know, child abuse and like uh, endangerment, you know, trafficking. But when it came to like something small, like, oh, well, they're hoarding guns. Like, then, you know, they were like, all right, let's finally like take action over this. Like, you know, forget mm -hmm. all these other allegations that we're probably not even going to prove, but we have proof that they have guns. Let's go after this, right? And I was like, man, like, we have so much bigger issues in this country that yeah. they were like, let's go after the minor incident one, right? So, you know, maybe, like, if people, like, in cults right now think they're getting away with things, like, um, you know, the, there's probably a big chance they are getting a lot you know, away with a lot of things. Um, but, yeah, that's a lot to I, think about. I would say, bro, I mean, th this was, like, pretty crazy, bro. And I hear all the time, bro, like, Everyone says, Waco, bro, Waco, Waco. And so, I mean, it's crazy hearing the full actual story. Um, but I wanted to share an even crazier story that uh, I just want you to imagine this. Imagine Maverick City. If you guys, a lot of our audience is Christian. Imagine Maverick City moves out to middle of nowhere and then decides to commit mass suicide. What would you think? You mean like like the whole band just kills himself? No, or like, like all the church. Like uh, get like, people to join you in like no, yeah, like suicide. the whole Maverick City Church. Okay, so, all of them go out. So like this mega church goes out in the middle of nowhere and commits just suicide. commit suicide. What well, that's heck? something that actually happened. No cap, it actually happened. 
So there was actually um, this guy named uh, Jim Jones, and uh, he actually was was a Pente- Pentecostal, and he had a message, a good message. Real, like he had a really good message. It was about um, social justice. It was about uh, e- equality among races, among sexes. Mm-hmm. That then you know, like basically, this was a community that would like love anybody, you know, no matter who they were. And so they had this church, bro. And I'm telling you, bro, at the time, that thing was popping, bro. It was called the People's Temple. And I'm telling you, bro, they even had a, their own band. I want you to hear, hear this song real quick. The PT. Hey, welcome to the PT. <laughs> bro, hear this, bro. Hear this. And we're going to put better audio, but here. Man, it's not quite Maverick City, right? But <laughs> it's it's not obviously like there's a like a, a, a huge like change, you know. Of course, it almost feels like music. a lot, a little bit of soul music in there. There's a lot of soul music. Actually, pre- and, predominantly the church was made up of black people, but the leader was white. What exactly? <laughs> oh the. So, anyways, so this guy, this guy, he was famous. People from any everywhere in the world would come because he promised like something that was missing in this world. I mean, think about it. Um, what what oh, I would say, uh, what, what was uh, Brown v. Board was in 1950. So, um, if you really think about it, there was still a lot of racism going on. There was still a lot of prejudice going around, and like yeah, people, like very few white people were still like not like fully like being racist, but like most of them there were was, still on the hype. You know, there was a lot of people being racist back then. But I'm saying there was, a, age, there was a small portion of people like that were not with the racism thing. Yeah, yeah, even bro. To this day, there's still people that are racist, oh, bro. Oh, for sure. So, Karen's left and right, you know? I mean, but... So, this guy promised everything. His church was actually in California, I believe. So, it's kind of crazy. Hey, Cali. So, this mm. church was dope. And these guys were like, all right, what, what, what are we finna do? Like, you know, like, they don't like us in the United States. We want to make this utopia. Where are we going to? So, they chose this country called uh, Guyana. Or Guyana, I think. It's in South America... It's in between Venezuela and Brazil. And I didn't even know that a nation existed, bro. It's not what? even in the in the uh, it's probably like Copa small, America, huh? it's bro. Probably yeah. like small. It's actually not that small. It's it's probably like the size of like probably Contra like Costa? Arizona. Probably Arizona. Around okay, that. so like a state. It's like a state. And then um so they moved there and they basically have to start from scratch, bro. They they moved into a jungle and had to like basically cultivate uh, build buildings They have to do everything On their own They have like no money Nothing So they gotta do everything And it's a thousand people In there He moved a thousand people And so um, You know uh, Basically Like all of them Have to work super hard Like slaving away Because they have nothing built And they're struggling They have no food Nothing at all And um, So there's like Rumors coming out And you know People in the US Get kind of concerned So a reporter comes in And then And with a congressman They come here to investigate and they're interviewing a bunch of little kids, a bunch of grown people. And then, you know, there's a couple of people that are like, I want to go back to the U.S. I want to go back and I don't want to come back. And so the congressman's like, all right, let's go. He takes 15 people on his way to the airport. They actually shoot the congressman. They kill him and they kill four, one of the reporters and like three cameramen, sound producers, something like that. Damn. So five people get murked right there. Is there a movie on this? No, uh, there's. I'm pretty sure there's a Netflix show. Like Netflix, hop on this right now, (laughs) bro. And and there's actually the video of of when he started get he starts getting shot at the congressman. And bro, like think about it, how crazy it is that you actually go and shoot a congressman, bro. Like that's insane. Well, I mean, there's only. No, I was like, I was about to say, like, their only end goal, of course, was, like, suicide, so they don't care. No, so, I mean, he's, he, they're Pentecostal, they're Christian, so these guys don't have the end goal of dying, bro. Okay. They just don't want, like, basically, Jim Jones, the leader, he's, like, basically, like, nah, I'm not going to let these rumors get out, and more people are going to want to leave and f- look at this as escape. And he actually had armed guards around the whole compound so that the people wouldn't leave. Mm-hmm. But there were still a lot of people that loved him. I'm telling you, to this day, there's people that love him to this day, that they have mixed feelings about what he did. So the government hears that they killed the congressman, and they're gonna come down and and come in with the military, bro. They're not coming with no cops, bro. They're coming with everything, you know. And then um, so he hears about it, and he's like, "Yeah, we don't got a lot of time, bro. We don't got a lot of time." And so he actually gives a preaching right before. He commits mass suicide. 909 people die. Over 200 kids died. Almost 300. Mm. And he gives them cyanide. 
He gives him cyanide. What the uh, heck? Uh, that's where the expression is. Don't drink the Kool Aid comes from because he gives him like a Kool Aid mixed with cyanide, he, and he gives it. And people Santa that don't want to take it, people don't want to take it, and so he kills a lot of people too with a gun. And and I look. So there's actually a, a sound of of his preaching right before they actually die, and I actually found it on YouTube. And I just wanted to play for you guys. So he's like preaching. This very day if you don't die. You'll regret it if you don't die. You don't die. You'll regret it. Too many people. I bathed them. I bathed them. But I made my example. I made my confession. I made my manifestation. And the world was ready. Not ready for me. Paul said I was a man born out of due season. I've been born out of due season just like all we are. And the best testimony we can make is to leave this goddamn world. And, and so you think like he forced all these people to kill themselves? A bunch of these people that are just died are celebrating this, clapping, like enjoying this. And this man literally quotes Paul in his speech. And it's a 45 minute long speech that he's talking to people and basically encouraging themselves to kill themselves. And he's like, we got to leave this world. I don't think they had a choice. He said, y'all going to regret it if you don't yeah. die. Like, I'm still going to kill you. But they're you cheering, going bro. They're cheering. And it's like, what? bro, bro. It, it was absolutely crazy. There was people that were like, hey, bro, this, this guy's out of line. And then like, but people in the congregation themselves were like, oh, you're just scared to die. You're just scared to die. Like stuff like that. I, mm. I If you could hear in the audio. And there's like kids crying. There's like a, so much going on, bro. Bro, cue the sound like you need to leave. Like <laughs> really, bro. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> bro, so what the heck? So actually, 909 people come by, and there's only a couple of people that weren't in the compound that day, and so they end up coming back and find 909 bodies right there. And the government touches down with the military and just finds a bunch of bodies. And there's videos actually of thousand, like a thousand people just laid out right there, bro. It's heck of crazy. There's pictures, videos. Mm-mm. Yes. Be aware of your congregation. Mm-hmm. So before we wrap up, I do have the last the last story, right? Because I wanted to share this one because this one hits close to home, right? Should we go into a story or, or should we connect this back to? Let's go into a story and then connect it back. It's a quick let's, one. Let's it's, give like a five minutes, bro. It's we got five minutes. If you if you're anywhere from you know you know California and the LA area, and you know, California, you out here. Whoever's out here, you know, this one hits close to home because, uh, you know, I grew up in the church and, like, you know, I can't hang out with the boys and we used to make jokes about this congregation, right? <laughs> so there's this yeah. spooky church okay, on 18th. The worth it. <laughs> yeah, this, the, spooky, the spooky building on 18th Street, right? Uh, in Antioch, California. So there's this church called La Luz del Mundo and it's a Hispanic church that actually originated from Mexico. So there's this founder, and I got his name right here. Um, La Luz del Mundo was founded by Eusebio Joaquin Gonzalez in 1926. Super Mexican. Yeah, Eusebio. Yeah, 1926, bro. This goes way back, right, when he founded it. This is actually the longest-running one in this area because it didn't get shut down until 2019. Shoot. So from 1926 to 2019, they were running this cult, and it actually passed down three generations from him to his son to his grandson who was obviously the one that got stopped and put in jail recently. And he actually, last month, he got uh, he got his sentence, which I'll jump into right now. Pretty but nice. there's this creepy building on 18th Street, right? It was, like, painted gray, and they say La Luz del Mundo, which is completely, like, opposite of what you are, right? <laughs> the light of the world, I got this creepy dark building, and it's probably, like, maybe, like, a 25-member church. But uh, as I did my research, they're actually in 85 countries, and all their building setups are the same. So they target a small crowd in different regions as they go from town to town, right? City to city, mm. nation to nation, right? They all target, and they actually, I looked up their building, and they all look similar. <laughs> like, yeah, like these dark, opaque colors. And when you go inside, I actually never seen the inside until I researched it. When you go inside, almost gives you like a Catholic vibe with the rows and the chairs. But when you get to the center, he has like a king chair. Like whoever the pastor of the church is has like a big king chair, and I was like, yo, like, this is their strategy. They have a strategy for all their churches. Mm-hmm. And I was like, the only reason it was so interesting to me is because it's close to home, right? And uh, I remember in 2019, I woke up one morning because me and the boys always make jokes like, La Luz del Mundo, bro. We know they're creeps. And my dad would tell me and my sister to stay away from that church because rumor has it that in the pastors of the church, before a man was to marry his wife, he said he had to test the bride, Meaning sexually, he had to test the bride before she could marry to know if she was a virgin or not. Yeah. 
And I was like, bro, that's crazy. Don't ever step foot in that church, right? Uh, Dad, no taken. I'm not going there. (laughs) Right. And, you know, and all this was like rumors. Right. Because like you wouldn't know for yourself unless you go to this place. And like these allegations were actually like over time, over the years. But I mean, it's no crime. Right. If they do it willingly. Right. They were over the age. Yeah. Yeah, Consensually. So this guy, um, his uh, his grandson who actually got in prison was Nason Joaquin Garcia. He got in prison in 2019. He got sentenced to 16 years last month. Which I don't think was enough. It's not enough. Not enough. Because through these generations, it turns out that they were actually trafficking children. They got caught for child pornography, child trafficking, and abuse, you know, of women. And I was like, bro, 16 years? I was like, that's nothing, right? And they indicted him to the U.S. From Mexico, they indicted him. And the U.S. gave him his sentence, which was like a slap on the wrist for this guy. Because he's like in his 60s. I was like, bro, he's going to be out in no time. I was like, but, you know, it was just really interesting to me that it's so close to home and how this church had a strategy throughout all their countries to hit small local churches, you know, get these people like wash their brain out and, you know, do all these things with children and, you know, dudes, wives that are willing to do stuff like that. I don't know. Guys are weird. If if the guy does that with his like, you know, fiance, whatever. But, you know, it just hits so close to home. And that's why I like I just wanted to like share that with the group. Just yeah, to give man. it closure, because if you're in the area and you want to know yeah. like, what don't happened, go. <laughs> don't go to La Luz del Mundo, run. And if you have a girl from there, run. <laughs> <laughs> run, no, get her out of don't there, Don't get bro. married there. Don't get married. She's not your don't, girlfriend, bro. Don't even, <laughs> yeah, like, don't even tell the true. pastor you're getting married. Bro, no, Jeremy, I, I think some, you want to share some uh, red flags about cults before we end off, just so that people in our audience know, hey, we shouldn't go here and we shouldn't go here. Yes. So uh, as we saw, there were some common themes with cults, um, one of them being uh, you know, sexual depravity. Mm-hmm. And then uh, another common feature was money. So I'm going to go into some red flags. Um, one really reoccurring thing that happens with cults is the God told me or I'm the special one of God mm-hmm. from the leader. Like you see, they claim to have a special relationship with God, your leader. Like God talks to him. He doesn't talk to you, and you're here to to see what your leader has been told by God. And um, that is a really reoccurring theme with cults. Yeah. Um, Another thing that we can watch out for is uh, authoritarian leadership. You know, um, don't question me. I'm your pastor. Um, What I say goes. You know, this is a really common thing. Like, uh, of course, we mentioned a lot of cults that are really extreme, but... um, even smaller churches like that don't go as deep as you know some some sick thing they can have cultish tendencies so if your leadership says things like oh like i can do this because i'm the leader or you know starts justifying sin in some sort of way mm. just like in a religious way like oh um you know i can do this because i'm serving harder than you and you know i can get away with stuff like this you know, these are things to watch out for. My way or the highway. Yeah, exactly. That's leadership that doesn't want to, doesn't work out of love. Um, another thing to that quotes is really common is uh, they want to isolate you. Um, just yeah. like the Jim Jones mm-hmm. cult, like try to kill off people when they left. This is really common in quotes that if you leave the cult, no one is ever allowed to talk to you. Or, or for example, uh, if there's another church down the street and you're in a cult, you guys are not cool with them. You guys are not going to associate with them. So if you start to see that your church like starts to see themselves as better than other churches or doesn't want to associate to uh, with other churches, you know that is a cultish tendency and it's something to stay away from. Um, another thing is um, the the I'll, just to wrap it up. I'm going to say if they threaten you when you want to leave the cult. If they say God is going to punish you for leaving this cult or for leaving this church, of course they wouldn't say God is going to punish you for leaving this cult. They don't claim to be cult. (laughs) (laughs) But if if they say God is going to punish you for leaving leaving us or if you talk bad about me, God is going to punish you, you know, that's a really um, red, that's a real big red flag to watch out for. Yeah. So those are just a few things that we got to watch out for. Of course, like, We talked about a lot of big cults, but, you know, even smaller congregations, you know, things local to us, they can start to, um, you know, begin to act cultish. 
Uh, I, for one, had a run-in at, at a Bible study at school. Um, I was invited to a Bible study, and, uh, like, they uh, brought up this verse in Luke 14, 28. Um, they talked about counting the cost of being a Christian. And then the person asked me, has anyone ever sat down with you to count the cost? Like, has a proper Christian ever sat down with you? A proper Christian like myself, he said. And I was like, no. He's like, oh, in that case, you're not saved. What? And I was like, <laughs> I was like shocked. I was like, whoa, like, this Dang. is a story for the road. <laughs> Sorry, chosen one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so cults are way closer than we but can imagine. Question, so. question. Jeremy, since you're on the topic of red flags, can a megachurch be a cult? Sheesh. Can a megachurch be a cult? I yeah. mean, heck yeah. Come on, let's talk about the it because there's this, there's this preacher, um, and I always forget his name. Why do I always forget his name? I know who he is. Um, there's this preacher online. I know we're short on time. Um, whatever. I forget his name, but you'll know him because he drank uh, his blood. He cut his hand. Mm. This is like a 5,000 to like 7,000 member church. And uh, I forget what state. It might be Texas because I know they're known for mega churches out there too. Oh yeah. But this guy slid his hand right. And Kenneth Copeland. Kenneth Copeland. He squeezes his blood into a cup, mm. and him and his buddy share the cup, right? And they drink the blood, saying because his blood is special, right? This is the new covenant. This is the new covenant, right? Like he's trying to mimic like Jesus's Last Supper, right? Mm -hmm. Where he actually embodies his blood with wine, but instead this guy's actually drinking like his own blood. Mm -hmm. So like the, the question is like when you, this is also like a red flag, you know? So in mm -hmm. that case, like I think a mega church can also display things. Yeah. Not just because like, like maybe you could leave freely, but there are acts within the church that are like off. Right. Yeah. That, that aren't even scripture based and people are just drinking the Kool-Aid. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, just to put it on topic, you know, a mega church could be a mm -hmm. cult. Yeah. yeah guys. And just to wrap it up, you know, First Timothy says, um, it's uh, chapter 4. I'm sure you guys can find the verse. It says, watch your doctrine, um, because if you do, you and your hearers will be saved. So that's uh, that's what we want to wrap it up with, guys. And Jose, spin that camera to lastly, me. Oh, before oh. you. I was like, lastly, bro, like just for me and my part, I was going to say there's this thing, bro, scripture over culture. Like, yeah. make sure you got your relationship with Jesus on point. And you're reading your own word because, you know, it's easy to, like, get, you know, spoon fed from other people. But, like, the moment you do your research and, you know, you pray to God, like, he's going to give you revelation where you need to be. Don't let your emotions, you know, take care of, uh, like, sometimes what you want to hear. It's, you know, that's what people are going to do, you know. Yeah, roll us out, mm -hmm. JC. Spin that camera over here. All right, guys. Thank you guys for watching us. We have some more heat coming through. It is summer heat coming. So just stay tuned. We'll see you guys on the next podcast. Hey. Peace.